this is the best PvE build in all of Deep Woken, and it's unbelievably powerful. To give you an example of just how strong this build is, the God Slayer version 3, an objectively weaker build, it was able to kill Fairyman in only 20 seconds. One cycle chaser with zero chain of perfection, and if you got good enough, you could even one cycle grip chaser with no chain, a feat no PvE build has came close to doing. So through a ton of stat optimizations, a lot of research, and a failed test build that cost me a sinner's ash, I present to you the build that can kill a drowned god, the God Slayer PvE version 4. This video will include the stat order and how to progress the build, tips to make it, gear that you'll need for the build in the end, and how to use it to its full potential. This build is designed for high level PvE players, so the better you are, the better this build will be in your hands. And as always, the build maker link is in my discord. For this build, race isn't super important, and you can pretty much use anything you want, although the two most optimal are Vesperian for defense and Felinor for climb height. Make sure you invest no points on the starting screen. This is so we can put it into our attunement immediately. Make sure you unlock Flame Charm and Iron Sing, putting more points into Flame Charm. Origin doesn't matter here, although you want to go deep bound ideally since the deep bound passives are very useful. When you spawn, you want to immediately get 40 flame charm. While you can get a mantra to make this faster, I just spammed the elemental training item. You'll need 100 or so nodes to do this, but don't worry, it doesn't take that long, and you can just AFK it. And we'll go over all the pre-shrine mantras and talents very soon. Next, you want to get to 50 iron sing, using the same methods as flame charm. From there, you go all the way to 50 willpower, then comes the hard part. You want to go to the surface and kill Kaido. There's two ways to do this. You can either buy a carry, or you can use Providence Thorns and just parry Kaido. Although that can be kind of hard. An alternate method is to server hop Boatman's Watch, and make sure that you ask the people if you can hit Kaido a few times before doing it. A few more things in the surface you can do is get three extra talent hands, and hand in five rigid prisms, so that way you can get Frost Roll later. You can also get the Plepski's will talent for free, and if you think you need to, you can do mantra quest as well. From now on in your talent hands, you want to try to always take or burn extra rare cards. Finally, you're going to go to 40 Fortitude, 1 Agility, and 1 Heavy. You'll need 15 Knowledge by now. Do the extra Knowledge quests for free if you want to get a little bit more. You can watch my video on those if you're interested. Before you Shrine of Order, you'll want to drink the Glass Blood Potion to actually get Frost Draw and then you'll need to Shrine of Chance for Exoskeleton. If you didn't take or burn a lot of rares ahead of time, you can Shrine of Blasphemy here. And the last thing you need to do before you Shrine is make sure that you have the talents that I have on screen. These are the bare minimum talents that you Shrine with. Now once you Shrine of Order, your post Shrine stats should be 24 in pretty much everything. You want to immediately go 25 Strength, Agility, and Fortitude for a lot of talents. Then you go all the way to 84. Frost draw. A really fast way to train this is using Frozen Servants on the guards. Finally, get to 100 Heavy Weapon. And then for your final point, you can invest it into Fortitude for a massive plus 1 HP. Those are the stats for this build if you're hyper maxing it with Vesperian. If you're going another race, make sure you test out the stats ahead of time. The bell for this build is obviously Crazy Slots since it can give you the highest damaging weapons in the game. Your armor is Prophet's Cloak for 20% Mantra Pen, and for your traits, you can either go 6 Song Chen and 6 Proficiency for maximum damage, or 4 Vitality, 4 Proficiency, and 4 Song Chen for more defense. It's up to what you prefer. On screen right now, I'll have all the required talents for the build. If you want to completely min-max the build and get all the optional talents, they'll be in my Discord, as well as the full build maker link if you get lost. With all of these stats and talents, this is the summary screen for the build. We're getting a fair amount of elemental intensity, 
and we're also getting a whole lot of HP, considering how strong this build is. Because you're dealing 1750 damage per M1 with a Divine Great Axe. That's 175% damage to your M1s with 18% pen, and 150% damage to your mantras with 25% pen to a boss like Chaser. So we are stacking an absolutely insane amount of damage multipliers with this build. Plus, you can even increase your mantra damage further through something like mantra damage food if you want to go that extra mile. The final mantras you should have are Warden's Blades to build insane chain stacks and for damage, Frozen Servants, you'll put a Wind Gem on this to proc a speed boost, Ice Cubes for a ridiculous single target, Ice Flock for free damage, Metal Ball for crazy movement, Metal Armament for insane damage, Glacial Arc for mobility, as well as Ice Skates for even further mobility, and then your final support slot can either be Flame Wisp, Iceberg, or Adrenaline Surge, depending on what you want. Personally, I got Iceberg, although Flame Wisp reduces the self damage from Flame Within, and Adrenaline and Surge is a constant speed boost. If you want to modify your mantras, you start with 3 Cloud Stones on Warden's Blades to allow it to hit everything in a huge radius. On Frozen Servants, you add 1 Cloud Stone and 1 Blast Spark. This is so you can keep the ether cost low while adding a lot of range. Keep in mind, you only want to use the Blast Spark for certain bosses, like Chaser and Atheron, since you can't move while casting it. And depending on your support mantra, you want to put 3 of each Log Stone on Flame Wisp, 3 Drift Shards on Iceberg, and no modifiers on Adrenaline Surge. The rest of the mantras don't have any modifiers. Alright, enough yapping, let me show you this build in action and kill Chaser. Alright, let's go kill Chaser. As you can see by my head, I have zero Chain of Perfection stacks. That's because I'm going to be one cycling Chaser with no crazy slots and no chain because this build is just that powerful. I'll have a full layer 2 build in the future if you want to know how fast this is. I forgot flame within there so I couldn't do the tech to get an extra hit in, but that should still be fine. I should be able to break the blood jars pretty easily. I got hit there, but it doesn't even matter. This build is just too strong. Although missing that extra hit at the start is a minus 4% to my damage, and in the long run, that's probably like a minus 1000 damage, but I should still be fine. Roll that, pop our buffs, and let's kill Chaser. I'll Spine Cutter him and spam out all of my mantras. Find our Spine Cutter, Ice Cubes, and if I did everything right, Chaser should be dead here. And let's go. Very easy. Yeah, one cycle Chaser, no Chain of Perfection, no crazy slots, and I even got hit. This build is just so strong. As you saw, we were still able to get an insanely fast Chaser kill, considering that wasn't even a good run and I wasn't even at my highest possible damage yet. I believe this is the only build in the game at the moment that is capable of doing what I just did. And if you also consider that this build can get a 3 minute 36 second floor 1 clear, it is insanely fast. And of course it's able to do insanely well against other bosses including effortlessly one-cycling Atheron. But you may ask, how does it compare to other PvE builds? Short answer, it's a lot stronger. Long answer, you'll have to wait for the video on that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, especially that intro, it took quite a while. So subscribing would be greatly appreciated. Anyways, make sure you join the Discord if you want to get the build and keep an eye out for some epic content with this build, since I'm sure I will be pulling off insane feats with it. Anyways, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.